Annapolis youth our future. Young people are our future. The Office of Youth and Community Action launched a scholarship program called Rock for Youth. The program invites all city residents to contribute to build a million dollar fund to help send Annapolis High School graduates who otherwise would not have the opportunity to go to college to college. Five students have been selected and will begin studies at the Anne Arundel Community College this fall. Over the last six months, the office has provided training for at-risk youth through the Sherwin-Williams Homes Maintenance Program and a wooden window repair program. A $100,000 grant on lead paint removal offers a training program to certify workers in the process. Working with our federal partners, requests for funds for skill building and green technology, particularly for certified energy auditors, is underway. A base of skilled energy auditors is crucial to the work of Annapolis EZ. EZ, the innovative public-private partnership loan program to help residents transform homes and business buildings into energy efficiency. This program, while privately funded and used as a model by Congressman Chris Von Holland for a federal funding program, joins other city loan initiatives as the Sprinkler Fund, thank you, the Historic District Building Facade Program. Naples is blessed with volunteers, which are an exceptional city asset. The commitment of people to make a difference in the world um, they live in locally keeps Annapolis strong. Like the United Way, the city has created a variety of volunteer choices for pocketbook contributions. If education is an interest, Rock for Youth may be your choice. If carbon reduction of emissions and carbon, carbon offsets is your interest, then DNAP's program, similar to TerraPass, will help the city meet its carbon reduction goals by 25% over the 2006 levels by 2012. And that may be your choice. If celebrating our nation's birthday on July 4th is an interest, then contribution to that fund with the recreation and parks may be your choice. And Greenscape, the city's landscaping and Earth Day program, also accepts contributions. In addition to opportunities for gifting, citizens are involved in contributing time and skills to a variety of boards and commissions. Following the Let's Talk conversations, which engaged 900 citizens, 32 residents volunteered for the Citizens Advisory Commission that has recommended the comprehensive plan that will guide the city's land use for the next 10 years. This year, over 250 people volunteered and, and served on city boards. And I've got a page that lists all the city boards and commissions that I am not going to read to you, uh, but they are listed. Other, another 1,000 people in midshipmen have volunteered their time with Greenscape, Greenscape uh, cleanup and restoration efforts. The city leaders need to be mindful and protective of the processes of openness in government that nurtures willingness of citizens to contribute time and money to keep their city and quality of life strong. Annapolis, the Emerald City, all things green. Annapolis has always been ahead of other jurisdictions on environmental initiative. The city was 29 years ahead on tree canopy protection. It is a leader in urban localities in the state with 42.42% tree canopy. The city's agreement with DNR to reach a 50% goal is the highest in the state, and it means planting 1,000 trees a year, a goal we continue to meet. For more than 30 years, we led the way in urban open space with 19 street end parks 200 acres preserved through our public land trust. Our laws on the environment are the strongest in the state, embodying best managing practices and are used by other agencies as examples of what local government can do to make a difference. The city's new sustainable community action plan challenges a new ways to make a difference. Looking to reduce our carbon footprint the administration is moving on efforts to convert our bus fleet to natural gas, which is a cost reduction. 
Meetings are being held with the staff of T. Boone Pickens for grant support for this conversion, and meetings are underway on partnership with the state for use of its underutilized CNG station. Legislation introduced tonight will launch a clean air auto program. I'm also asking for a committee to explore the feasibility of a carbon tax with dividends, that's a revenue enhancement, for the city of Annapolis. When all is said and done under the current green bandwagon, Annapolis, the state capital, should be dubbed the Emerald City of Maryland because Annapolis is green. This year, Annapolis became the first municipality to complete an urban watershed action plan. Programs identified that are shovel ready are being pursued with our congressional leadership in the state's economic recovery program. Included are two innovative programs on nitrogen reduction in our creeks and storm drain retrofits. If these studies models prove positive, we will be able to save thousands of dollars in the future for cleaning up our waterways and meeting goals soon to be imposed by the EPA. The goal to reduce the city's impervious surfaces from 42% to 26% is recommended, leading by example. The city introduced rain gardens in the dock area with its reconstruction of the deteriorating bulkheads, rain gardens at the stadium site and surface change on several acres of land um, reduced our impervious surfaces. But we have much more to do, and this is reflected in the budget. In March, sometime in March, we are in March, but later in March, Back Creek Nature Park opens to provide an 11-acre National Model Environmental Education Center. Street and parks are being converted to meet new environmental standards for capturing and filtering stormwater, rainwater. And finally, through the tireless and sometimes frustrating efforts of the city's leadership in recreation and parks, a new recreation center is underway. The budget reflects an anticipated new income for a pay to play when the facility opens this autumn. It too is state of the art. With green roofs, rain gardens, capture rainwater for use on athletic fields imperv and, and pervious surface parking lots. And we are underway for proposals for the use of the recreation center on Mar St. Mary Street, which was built by the way as a USO center in the 1940s. And that will also bring additional revenue to the city. Short term gains at the expense of long term gains left the city facing infrastructure stress in 2001 with council approved public programs stalled for 15 years. This administration has been aggressive in completing the approved CIB P program. West Street and programs uh, improvements bringing more than 219 million in new assessments has breathed new life into the city's economic vitality fostering business-friendly programs like First Sundays. And the long overdue bricking of streets and sidewalks has added to the warm and historical feel of our capital city. It also fosters the impression that we care about ourselves. Major roadways like Forest Drive and Pro and then the Edgewood Road <coughs> improve neighborhood stability and pedestrian safety. Long-awaited undergrounding of utilities is underway in the historic district and new updated office space has been created serving city staff and the public we serve. But new times demand new improvements. And so our historic city hall needs major mending. Energy demands and innovations require new vision. Space needs to, be, to meet public demand for services is not yet resolved. New capital programs reflect recognition of needs to reduce the carbon footprint. Harness energy in new ways, reduce impervious surface, acquire space to complete the city's community outreach efforts, advances in transportation and transit, restores the 80-year-old water plant and upgrade outer West Street improvements anticipated as an outcome of the Volunteer Citizen Committee, and downtown revitalization recommended for Clay and Washington Streets and Compromise Streets as proposed by the Office of Planning and Zoning is also included in new programs for the future.